Okay, so this is my entry into the uh, Spring Lisp Game Jam 2023. Uh, basically, had to. Um, basically, I wanted to give myself uh, a few evenings to learn as much about Interlisp as I could. Um, this is, of course, Xerox Parks um, Interlisp machine, uh, running a completely foreign dialect of Lisp to me. Although you can see, uh, if we click here and go to execute, right click, by the way. There's a Xerox Common Lisp, Common Lisp, Interlisp, and then uh, there's like an old Interlisp that I have no idea what it does. Um, so anyway, this is the Interlisp uh, shell here. Uh, REPL, I guess is a better term. Um, you can move windows by right-clicking and going to move, or you can shape them. And shape is just kind of a, a position and resize all in one. Um, but let's start a 15 game. Um, this is a classic sli uh, sliding tile puzzle. I'm just going to do a 4x4. Four um, let me move it into into view a little better. Um, and basically, you want to get one through four, and then five through whatever that is, eight, and then you go down until there's a space right here. So um, generally, I don't know about solving this on the spot. It does a lot of flashing. I need to do selective screen updating right now. I just just told it to do everything. Um, just given the time constraints, it gets really hard. It gave me a super easy puzzle, um, but you can see. It's already solved. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of how that works. Now, when I close this out, um, it's going to basically kill the window and everything inside it. Uh, I had to stuff the board into the window itself. I'm not sure if that's the proper way to do it, but um, we can inspect it even. So, uh, actually, do I get a window back out of this? Uh, we'll do a 7x7. Seven seven. Okay. No, I guess it doesn't. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is a, like a 7x7. Seven seven. Go away, you. I need to implement balance checking. Um, but it still works. Um, you know, when you have a limited amount of time, there's only so much you can do. But anyway, uh, yeah, you can have the board as big as you want. But anyway, uh, I would say it's a success. You know, in a, in a few limited evenings, I learned a pretty good chunk of this uh, Interlisp dialect. I ended up getting like six PDFs and like a book of a few... Well, the book is over a thousand pages. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's kind of a cool little system. Um, if you want to see the files that I... Uh, if you want to see the functions, you can go files like this. And these I haven't dumped to... Uh, these are all in the REPL right now. I haven't dumped these to, um, to a file yet. They're just living in the REPL. I'm not going to dump them. Um, if you want to edit something, I'll show you the structural editor real quick. Uh, you can go... Um, ed and then like a function name let's say and again this is this well i didn't say it the first time but this is not my best code ever um, there's a lot of slop in here uh, given time constraints you end up making horrible sacrifices uh, this is this little sash deal i don't know if there's a proper name for it you click and drag uh, this is the editor you can click this and drag it around uh, if you middle click it you get editor options um, it's very picky about uh about structured editing, so it's kind of like, um, you know, modern Emacs. If you want to have, what is it, pair edit on, it'll balance your stuff. It's super heavy-handed about that, uh, which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing, well, especially when you get into quoting. It gets a little squirrely with that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to middle click and I'm going to click uh, click done and abort. Uh, if you click done, it just updates the function in the database, so it's kind of a cool thing. Um, I can show you the inspector real quick too. So, um, create window. We can do a uh, four, six, uh, three. So we're going to create a window and then we'll inspect it. Uh, if you don't want to type all the crazy closing parentheses, you can use a square bracket and it'll just hammer everything closed. Um, but you can see this is the standard inspector that you, that you get with all you know, well, all decent. Lisp dialects. Um, if you middle click something, you can actually. Uh, where's the region? Here's the region. If I middle click this, left click and then middle click, I can, as a record, uh, we can look at it as a region and we're going to get, you know, the attributes uh, if we force this into a, into a region, region type. So there's records. Records are kind of like structures, but they have this weird overlaid. Um, I don't know exactly. I've been studying the language for only a little bit, but they have kind of a 
a weird overlay that kind of deduces what to force these things into. And I need to look into it more. But, you know, for only working in the evenings for maybe five evenings, I've not had a ton of time. Okay, so I think I've uh, yammered on long enough. If you do work in this and you want to save your running image, right-click the desktop. You can go to Save VM. That will save your image. Um, you know, you got a file browser. If you want to browse file files, let me stretch it out here. Um, if you enter the star character, you, you're, enter, you're working from your local directory. Um, if you need to make uh, like a little log window like I did using this, these are just kind of my to-do list. Actually, this is done now. Um, you can do that by right-clicking and then going to, I believe it's T-Edit is the... I think this is for text more so than code because it doesn't auto-balance things. So I think it's more like word processor type territory. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and it was a fun and challenging uh, project. So, have a good day.